JPL Climate Day brings students, educators, and the general public together with scientists and other climate experts for a free, educational, and fun event about Earth's changing climate. Researchers and other representatives from NASA, universities, and additional organizations will speak on various aspects of climate change. Attendees may participate in hands-on activities, view exhibits, demonstrations, and student presentations, play Climate Jeopardy and other games, and get information on careers and resources for teachers and community members. We're going to look at some of the hands-on activities now. I'm Tanya Kane, and I am a uh, PhD student at UCLA. We're trying to get kids to think about carbon dioxide and where it comes from and what it does to the ocean when it enters the ocean. So this is an ocean acidification demonstration, you know, getting them to think about the fact that they're breathing it out and it's, um, it's a greenhouse gas. We're using bromothymol blue, which is a pH indicator. Um, it's a dye that we just add to water and then we have the kids actually blow through a straw into the water with the dye indicator um, and it starts out at a neutral pH and it's a blue indicator and then as they blow CO2 from their lungs into the water it changes to a like bluish green and then a light yellowy color so um, getting kids to think about how CO2 can change water pH. I usually start by saying, um, so what is CO2? And they all stare kind of blankly until somebody finally is brave enough to answer and then we, we get going with it. So, so it's been pretty fun. I think everybody seemed pretty uh, interested and I think they like also racing each other to see what happens to the dye. So <laughs> it's a very participatory uh, activity so I think it's been fun so far. My name is Dina Deck. I'm from Southern California. I work as a COSI mentor teacher. We're working on an activity that is creating a cloud inside of a bottle. So we're going through what the water cycle is and how clouds form. I teach them a little dance going through the steps of what it is to create the water cycle. We add a, a match that has been lit so that it adds uh, particles into the bottle itself, so it's a closed atmosphere. We put pressure on the bottle, which gives it a great clarity, and when you release the pressure, automatically it creates a cloud in the bottle. Kids get very excited about it. They're very interested in doing it, and I mentioned to them this is something they can do in the classroom, but certainly since it requires matches, not to do at home. Hi, I'm uh, Ranjan Muthakrishnan. I'm a PhD student at UCLA uh, studying uh, anthropogenic influences on coral reefs and how coral reefs are doing in this changing environment. The experiment we're doing today is taking some water with, uh, with an indicator, a chemical indicator of acidity, uh, bromothymol blue, uh, and when it's at neutral pH, the water, it, it, it shows up as a nice blue color, but then when you add carbon dioxide to it and make it a little bit acidic, that changes in color from that nice blue to a, a green and then a yellow as it gets more and more acidic. So what we're doing is we have a, a, a nice little pot of you know blue ocean water and then we take concentrated carbon dioxide in the form of dry ice and we drop it into, the, into that water with the indicator and it creates that great foggy effect with all the you know, dry ice turning into gas and becomes you know, nice and foggy and then and then we, uh, and then at, we, we sort of blow off the fog, and you can see underneath it that the water has changed from that nice blue color to a much more green, and then a much more yellow color, showing that you know the acidity is changing. And then, and then we show the kids uh, a number or some 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 jars with different kinds of either shells or eggshell or chalk, which represents that those shells and the calcium carbonate of the reefs. And we show it to them with just water, and then with uh, vinegar as an acid, and you can see that. When they're in acid, they start to dissolve, and you can see the bubbles coming off it. And I like to believe that it really brings home the point that that changing the acidity of the ocean just by adding carbon dioxide to the air uh, really has an effect on those creatures and the, the homes that they're building for themselves. I think that they're really excited when the dry ice comes out, and like, and it's it's such a visual thing to see. Oh wow, it really changed color. Like, you know, it, it seems like nothing's really going on unless you can see something visual like that, and I think that really does have an impact on the students.
My name is Zach Schachner and I'm a graduate student at UCLA. For our experiment, what we're doing is we're showing the kids how different substances, four different substances, we have air, we have soil, sand, and water, and we are testing how they uh, differentially or how they absorb heat once exposed to a heat lamp. Right? And the plan is that we show them that each substance has a different heat capacity. And of course, water, which is covering the majority of the Earth, has the highest heat capacity, meaning we can just bombard it with all this heat and it'll keep its temperature relatively constant. It's interesting, I, we do a hypothesis going in, we ask them which is gonna, is gonna heat up the quickest. And by and large, they say water, so they really think that the water is gonna heat up quickest. But what, when they see it, and when they can see that the water actually heats up the slowest, they start to realize, you know, these things don't all heat up the same amount. They have different sort of physical characteristics that uh, uh, make them heat up at different amounts.